Hello, we are Geeks Assembled, and today me and Susan will be discussing a 1955 movie um, starring the late, great James Dean. Um, the, there he is, there be and Susan. Um, released, I think it was a month after he passed away. Um, yeah, um, he was he was destined for big things, was James Dean, because every movie he made, he, he got great reviews, he got nominated for this, nominated for that. Um, and to say this is one of his um, classes, one of his best. So this one is about the young delinquents of the 50s, so we say, um, rebelling against anything really yeah everything uh, everything so we'll go over to susan and her opening thoughts on rebel without a cause yeah it uh it was uh 1955 and <laughs> jack brown hadn't hadn't hung out with uh with marty mcfly but there was a big time energy about going uh you know watching space. There was a bunch of interest in astronomy. Um, it was before the whole, uh, you know, President Kennedy pushed for, for the space program. And it was, uh, and it was challenging for young people. And it, all these young people were just, you know, that was what they really wanted to, you know, how they really wanted to live. They wanted to, to just party all the time. They wanted to be uh, engaged. And, um, and this was, you know, these were the kind of people that, that the beatniks were writing about. Uh, I mean, Sal Minio sounds just like one of the main characters in, uh, in, um, what's his name? Oh, uh, anyway, uh, the guy who wrote On the Road. Oh my God, I can't believe it. Jack Kerouac. Oh my God, I'm having such a brain freeze. <laughs> um, you, you, just FYI, all you who watch these things, uh, Lee's, Lee's partner in, in doing these podcasts, me, I've, I've come down with the, like uh, sort of a uh, thing called Parkinson's and it's just kind of really, sometimes I lose a word or two here and there. It's going to get, it's going to, I have to fight for them and sometimes it's going to take me a little bit to find them and then I want to do them like. Usually, <laughs> they're usually down the back of the sofa. They are usually down the back of the sofa. That's a good, it's a good point. Anyway, um, so yeah, Jack Kerouac was one of my favorite writers, and, and there, one of his lead lead characters, and in, in three or four of his books, is named Sal. So I mean, like, yeah, like, like it inspired the writer of this movie to call Sal Minio this character down here. Where is he? Where's that little guy? I don't see him anyway. Um. Anyway, he's 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 leaning right next to, right right next to our our uh, James Dean. Anyway, um, and you know they, uh, the actor is, is called Salminia. The the character was called John something, and and they called him, uh, what do they call him? Pablo. Plato. Plato, that's right. And um, so it was, you know, he was fun and, and he was a good, uh, and he was, he was a good character. I mean, he was a, he was a rebel himself. He lived uh, always being tormented, always being bullied. I mean, none of us know anything about that. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I mean, he was, he was, and then James Dean's character uh, came into the the city and 
suddenly everything is rosy and, and he's so he's, he actually thinks that he has a chance so uh um um plato does and uh um, the other ones who think that they have a chance are actually uh What's his name? Um, Jim, that's what it was. Jim's, uh, Jim's mom and dad, his, his mother was a domineering, uh, pretty much a psychopath. And, and his father was, was kind of a pushover. And that really affected his, his whole reality. He was just I mean, he did that, he did something that was, you know, referred to in one of the worst movies ever, The Room, where he screams at his father, you're tearing me apart. And I mean, it's, and it was played by Jim Bacchus who played, who played Lovey uh, Thurston Howell III in, uh, the millionaire in um, in Gilligan's Island, and you know it was a it was a great story uh, of his actual you know redemption through the through the losing of of Plato's life, and uh, you know a lot of a lot of amazing things happened in the story, and. It took place in, in Los Angeles, the Mount Palomar uh, Observatory was supposedly a planetarium. And this one great big gigantic mansion was, they broke into supposedly. And so that was, uh, anyway, it was, it was, it was interesting. Um, what, yeah, uh, those are like my opening think, thoughts about it. What, uh, mm -hmm. What about you? Well, I thought I'd seen this movie before, or somehow, but what was sitting down watching it uh, today, I realised I've never seen this one before. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mostly got it confused with another James Dean movie, but um, okay. I, got, I got 20 minutes into it and I'm thinking, no, nope, that doesn't ring a bell. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, it's it, it drags you in. It, it, um, it you know the conflict between the new boy at school and the the gang of uh, what do you call them, bullies? Yeah. Um, you know, from from the from the day one, they're out to get him. Yep. Um, and then it all goes all goes wrong when. Um, you know, after the little um, flick knife fight, they offer him the chicken run challenge. Of course, is where you're both in two cars heading towards a cliff. You have to jump out. The last one to jump out wins. Yeah. Um, of course, um, what was his name? Was it um, Buzz? Was it Buzz? Yeah. Buzz got his um, sleeve caught in the car. Window, oh, um, the window roller down there. Yeah, and um, couldn't get out of the car and went over the cliff and died. And that's when the rest of the gang. But it, was, it wasn't just what the car didn't just go over the cliff and and fall and yeah. flatten and crush and, and collapse like a flan. Yeah. It it exploded. It Michael Bay exploded. Yeah. They they that was the first time maybe that they ever used that like. That something would just like crash and then instantly explode. I mean, for and that's say that's the the start of when the rest of the gang really go out to get Jim. Uh huh. Um, I always I found it weird that say this one with the the racing challenge is how James Dean died. Uh huh. In the in his car. Um, oh, yeah. 
Yeah, he died in a car crash. Um, oh, no. Who's that? But then there was always that story what Alec Guinness used to tell when he met James Dean. Yeah. You, you know that, that story where he, James Dean showed him this new sports car. He's only just bought it that day. And Alec Guinness saw the car and he says, if you get in that car, you'll be dead within, I don't know, so many days. Whoa. And he was. Whoa. Mm. So Alec Guinness had, had the force then, I think. Yeah, um, that, that, was, yeah. that was some definitely, you know, the, always in motion the future is. Mm. Um, it, it is, it's a, it's a gripping story. I mean, it's not a um, highly intellectual story. It's a oh. simple story of being the outsider of, um, of the, you know, the parents not listening. Um, the bullies are, are always picking on him and he's there torn. He's just torn. Then he discovers... Um, he Play discovered um, uh, Natalie Wood, Judy. Judy and Plato and... Plato. But you see here, Plato, I think he had a thing for, for Jim. I, it's, it, it's like um, Jim was actually, James was actually, or Jim was actually like torn between John and Judy. Yeah. It was, uh, it was it was obvious that he was torn. The way you saw Plato looking at him and that you thought, yeah, you've got a thing for him. You can see that they never they never said it in the movie. They never sort of said, Oh, right, he's got a crush or whatever. But uh who was his name? Sal Sal Mino. I mean Sal Mino was gay. Yep. And it was alleged that him and James Dean did have an affair. Yep. Um, and Salminio never denied it <laughs> when when he was always asked. So. Yeah, would you? Oh, well, I think he used just to say, James, James was just James was very special. <laughs> Um, it's a shame that Salminio, I think in the 1970s, got murdered. It was murdered. Um, so, uh, you know, you also have actors being, you know, passing away, old age, stuff like that. You have, in this one, you've got James Dean killed in a car crash. Salminio murdered. Natalie yeah. Wood murdered? Natalie Wood, well, was she? <laughs> Allegedly. Well, I mean, there was a whole. You know, yeah. she was married to was that guy in Heart to Heart or whatever. Yeah, Ro Robert um, Wagner. Robert Wagner, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she she drowned, didn't she? Um, but so I mean, those three, the three there, just the three. Just, <laughs> yeah. It's a, a weird connection. It is. Hmm. It's strange that. Well, going back to the movie. Was it James Dean? Mind blown. Actually. I mean, it's such an iconic image of James Dean. I think it's it's this out of this picture with his jacket, looking sultry. Him, him, and Marilyn Monroe are, are two of the most iconic actors of that era, and their image is just sold. Yep. You know, I mean, James Dean and his sultry. Sultry look with his quiffed hair and his youthful looks. You can see why anybody would fall for him. And it's and he was he was destined he was destined to be a great actor. I mean, he was he was when the movies he made was a great actor, but he was destined for bigger things. Uh, as coming from this movie and um, uh, the, uh, the one what was also released after his death. Um, Giant. Yeah. But, um, yeah, just a great story. I say, I was quite surprised because I thought I'd seen this movie, but um, I got well into it, really enjoyed it. Um, and it's just a, it's just, 
it's a story about the social uh, life of that time um, of the nineteen the the rock and roll nineteen fifties, shall we say? Um, can I just say what one of the one of the gang? What a young Dennis Hopper! Yeah, he was. What so young? <laughs> so young. So young. That's uh, yeah. Uh, and this, it's. I love movies like this. What took me by surprise? So, good on me for picking it. Uh, no, you picked it, didn't you? It's on your list. <laughs> so, so what? I, I, I thought that the the pool scene was was amazing. The empty pool scene. Uh, you know, playing around in an empty pool. That's what that's what people did in 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 that city yeah. when people didn't uh, didn't occupy their homes. They drained their pools so that they wouldn't have to keep it up. And yeah. uh, a lot of those empty pools became places where people would. Uh, during the 60s, early 70s, were where people would learn how to skateboard and, you know, start doing the fabulous tricks that now show up on, you know, X, um, the X Games and stuff like that. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, the the other thing that's really wonderful about this, uh, I mean, it, it was um, it was it was intense watching them, you know, try to ask the cops for some help. Yeah. But then, like the cops failed them at every turn. I mean, when it, you know, it started with his father, you know, Jim's father not, not being with the darn, you know, not being able to protect his son. And then, the, then Judy's father not being able to protect her or him, or even want to protect the other kids from bullying. Like he just thought it was, you know, teenage hijinks and whatever. And stuff that he. And Plato's parents was nowhere to be seen. And, Pla Pla and, and Plato had a had a woman who took care of him, mm. the the black woman. And um, yeah, I, she was a she was a rather famous actress. Let me see. Um, was it? Was it Marietta, Marietta County? Yeah. Um, yeah, she was the she was the the so caretaker of of little uh, of little Plato, and um, and it was the last thing that she did. Uh, she lived in Hartford, Connecticut, for. Um, for her life, and she was in, in things from 1940 to 1955, and this is the last thing that she did. But she, but she lived to a ripe old age of 80. Yeah, she lived a long time, but this was, this was the end of her, of her career. Um, I think that she probably uh lived on the, the proceeds from this movie for the rest of her life because it was a really actually incredibly successful movie a lot, yeah. a lot of people have seen this you know millions of people have seen this so yeah i just more power to her and um let's see so yeah, and then the the other the other scene that was really 
incredibly intense was uh, was that first car car race with uh, with Judy as the as the you know the flag girl in the middle. And you know it would be re revisited in um, in a less sort of catastrophic way in George Lucas's films uh, in American oh. Graffiti and American Graffiti too. Graffiti. Didn't they do it in Greece as well? Yeah. They, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I. I, I but I just, yeah, yes, they did. And so, yeah, it's been on Broadway then. So there you go. Um, yeah. So it's just, it, it, it travels. It, um, it's a really sort of iconic piece of, of film. And the fact that, that they lined up all the cars, the, the cars were all in a, sort of a jumble. And so then they all lined them up and got them all in an order. And it's like they knew what they were doing, these, these kids. <laughs> Anyway, you can't get you can't get any parking lot like like put together like that anymore. So there's some <laughs> people who take in two, some people with their, their big trucks. They all had these really like the same kind of car. <laughs> that was also what made it really nice to nice and easy to keep it uh, even and steady and stuff like that. Um, anyway, I. I I enjoyed this. I love I love uh, uh, James Dean and 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 I love this movie. And I, I did see it. I did see it in film school for the first time, and then I saw it again a couple about maybe fifteen years ago. I saw I saw it again, and I just was like wow. And this time I was like. I really felt a lot of grief for the for the whole situation of uh, and and now my mind is blown that all of the actors suffered this way. Yeah. And Jim I, Yeah, Jim Bacchus, uh yeah, he was and seeing him was really fun to see actually. So um those are all all those it's uh, back over to you, Lee. Oh, th thanks, thanks, Susan. Yeah, um, I mean, I've, I've seen Jim Backus in loads of movies, and it's mainly mainly to, in the ones I used to see, it was, it was comedy parts and, and stuff like that. And of course, he's well famous for being the voice of Mr. Magoo, the uh, the blind old the <laughs> the blind guy in the cartoons uh, with the big thick glasses. Um, Great actor, um, and this part for him being the downtrodden husband was was just it was hard to watch sometimes, yeah. uh, especially the scene where um, James Dean was trying to make him stand up for himself, stand up. You know, he wanted his dad to stand up for himself. And he just wouldn't do it. And so that's when he attacked him. Yeah. Uh, that, that scene was really heated. Um, but it's, it's, it's one, of, one of the great movies, this. It's a wonderful movie. Um, and I do love watching, when we dip back into the decades, watching classic old movies. Uh-huh. Me too, yeah. It, because we could we could do modern movies every week. We could. It's we true. Could. There's some podcasts that do that. We could, but we do do modern movies. But why not delve back? You've got all this back catalogue of the, all these the movies in the world. Why not dip? Why not dip into the past? And that's what we. As I said I always look forward to when we go and do all these old movies. So. And I'm gonna we'll keep that. We're gonna keep that up. Good. So, uh, shall we go to final saying score on this then? Sure. Yeah. Over to you. All right. Well, um, I 
I know that there are a lot of people who uh, who love this movie and like they they, they think it's a, it is you know the the quintessential uh, movie describing the the fifties and sixties and so yeah I I I guess I kind of uh, agree with that and I'm I'm on I'm on the same page with you with that and. Um, the other thing that I'd like to uh, bring your attention to is that um, is that it's uh, it was you know it was instrumental in in bringing a lot of uh, a lot of teenage culture to the screen because before that before the, before that in the in the fifties like. They would concentrate on adult issues or or children's issues. There wasn't that between like twelve or fourteen and, and twenty four. There's just nothing describing that time frame in people's lives. And so yeah, this this started that whole thing, and that. And that's really why a lot of people honored uh, James Dean for his his work. I think he was he was young in this, but anyway, he's a he's a good he's a good actor, and his uh, he was challenged to do uh, to do a big um, to do a big emotional part with us and. Boy, he nails it. And yeah, yeah, even yeah, though I, I Natalie know, Wood sorry. hadn't it's gotten to the that. best, uh, her best acting yet, but you've uh, you've got a lot of you've got a lot of stuff that there's a lot of stuff in this. Um, she's not wooden, but she, you know, she she get to do more and more emotional stuff in her in her later years. Um, and our little Plato Sal was it was because of this that that, that people after um, after his nineteen fifty five books were named Sal mm. in, in Jack Kerouac's literature. And you know, then referred to in as there's like a universe of books, kind of William S. Burroughs, Jack Kerouac, and Allen Ginsberg. And because of that, the sound name became really, really uh, something that they used all the time. Joy. Enjoyable, and you didn't need to have Doc Brown there because this was a different 1955 entirely. But let me let me say, uh, we, we can go back to this time again. This is great, and uh, I'll I'll give this uh, I'll give this ten. Uh, 10 empty swimming pools out of 10. <laughs> and, um, thanks, Lee. This was fun. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Susan. Um, well, I think I'm going to go the same on this. Um, it delivers on everything, it really does. Um, so I'm going to give it 10. <clears throat> James Dean sultry looks out of 10. Mm -hmm. Look at that face. Mm -hmm. And look at Susan's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not laughing at your face at that. Just <laughs> don't hide. <coughs> no. Uh, but yeah, so that's our little review of a 1955 movie, Rebel Without a Cause. Um, if you haven't seen it, I do recommend it. It's, you got to try it once. Yeah, it's a wonderful watch. It's not a long movie, so you'll be eat, you'll just fly through it. Um, so 
if you'd like to join us, please, please get in touch, leave a comment on this video, leave a comment or messages, Facebook, Twitter, um, Insta, we're, we're all, all over the place. Um, if you've subscribed to our YouTube channel, please press the bell notification button and you'll get a ding or a whatever it makes every time we put up a, a video. A little ding like that. And um, also, if we do get you onto our group and on these casts, please be 18 plus. That's all we ask. Have a laptop or a PC, mobile phone or tablet to appear on the screen. With a, you know, so with a microphone, of course. Yeah, and use the Zoom. The Zoom is a wonderful thing. It really, it's a great invention. Yep. And it brings people from across the world together. Yep. With their love of movies, audio dramas, TV stuff, anything, you know, just brings and, us together. And sorry about, sorry about the audio drama earlier. You'll have to watch our, our, our other podcast from this weekend to, to know what I'm talking about, but oh my gosh. <laughs> Poor man, he, he had to suffer through that. I did suffer. I, I, and, and, I, he did, I, and he did score it really low, actually. I'll watch anything. I'll, I'll listen to anything. And I'll be honest. That's it, you know. So, so that is our little review. So please, you guys out there, get in touch with us. And so until next time, please be safe. Bye for now.